video, I'll show you how microwave diodes work and how to make an accurate microwave diode tester that also tests LEDs and Zener diodes. It only uses two clip leads, a 9 volt battery, and one other part. This tester will test microwave diodes the correct way using forward voltage drop. This is opposed to using a 9 volt battery in series with a multimeter which is inaccurate, non-intuitive, and gives a different reading for each type of multimeter you use. The tester we'll put together is meter independent. It measures the diode's actual voltage drop, which is not only the right way to do it, but is also very intuitive. So how do microwave diodes work? They're actually constructed of many high voltage diodes stacked on top of each other in series, so as to achieve a very high reverse breakdown voltage, as is necessary for their intended purpose which is to reside in a voltage doubler like this in a microwave oven. This requires that they are able to handle a reverse voltage drop of up to 12,000 volts. All diodes have a forward voltage drop. A common silicone diode like this one has a forward voltage drop of 0.7 volts. Since, however, a microwave diode is required to have a very high reverse voltage drop, it is stacked of many diodes in series. As a result, its forward voltage drop is typically between 5 and 8 volts as, a point, as opposed to the 0.7 volts that you would find in a common silicone diode. So contrary to standard diodes, you can't test a microwave diode with the diode check function of your multimeter because they supply typically less than 2.5 volts of bias voltage. You'll instead need to use a current limited voltage source using a 9 volt battery and a way to measure the voltage across a diode, which we will accomplish using the voltage function of the multimeter. Here's a wiring diagram of what we will construct. For R1, any value between 1000 ohms and 10,000 ohms will do. And these are very common values. I recommend a 2.2K resistor, which has the bands red, red, and red, and is very common. This will provide us with a current limited voltage source so we can connect directly to our meter. We'll then use the DC voltage function, which will simply measure the forward voltage drop across the diode. We'll construct our tester like this. I expanded the negative side of the battery using a knife, and I will press this resistor into it, like this, and wrap it around. Now this resistor is in series with the negative side of this battery. I'll then clip red lead on the positive side of the battery, and the black lead on the other end of that resistor. We now have a current limited voltage source. Now, when I hook this up to the multimeter, the red lead goes to the red lead here. Black lead goes to the black lead. We're gonna measure the full voltage of the battery. That is because this multimeter doesn't put much of a load on this circuit, and there's literally no voltage drop across that resistor, at least for now, until we start doing measurements. Now, if I want to measure the forward voltage drop of this microwave diode here, I would take the banded side, which is the negative side, and connect it to the negative, the black lead of the multimeter. And I would take the other side and connect it to the red lead. When I do that, the forward voltage drop of this diode imposes itself on the circuit and drops the voltage down to 7.4 volts, which is the forward voltage drop of this diode, 7.4 volts. Now if I reverse it, these have about a 12,000 volt reverse voltage drop, which means that it should not affect this at all. And that's the case, it did not affect it. So this is a good microwave diode. Now this is a shorted microwave diode right here. We're going to get an entirely different reading. We've got to do it like this because it's insulated. Notice that a shorted diode drops the voltage down to 0 0.07 volts, or 70 one thousandths of a volt. So that's basically a dead short. Now if I reverse it, I get the same thing. So this diode is conducting in both directions, which it should not do. A diode should only conduct in one direction. So this is a bad diode. Typically when microwave diodes go bad, this is what's going to happen to them. It's very uncommon for a microwave diode to, to fail in an open state where you're not getting a reading either way. That's very uncommon. Uh, I have seen it happen, but usually you're going to see some kind of a physical manifestation on the outside of the diode where it's actually damaged. So anyway, that's how you can test microwave diodes. This is the accurate and intuitive way to do it, as opposed to using the what you commonly find on the internet is a 
diode in series with a 9 volt battery, which is non intuitive. It is multimeter dependent and will give you inaccurate readings. You can also use this to test LEDs. So this can test LEDs that have a forward voltage drops up to 8 or 9 volts. However, you want to make sure that when you're testing LEDs, you hook them up in the proper orientation. Otherwise, they can be damaged if you hook them up backwards. So I'm going to test this LED with this current limited voltage source here. When I do it, the LED should light. As you can see, the LED is lighting and it's giving us a 1.8 volt drop across that LED, which is what we would expect. Again, you don't want to hook up LEDs backwards because officially you can damage them, but I've never actually seen one damaged in that manner. Another thing you can do with this is you can test Zener diodes. Zener diodes have a reverse voltage drop that is of a known value and are commonly used for voltage regulation and for voltage references. So in the, for the Zener diodes, you're going to hook up the banded side to the positive lead, and you're going to hook up the non-banded side to the negative lead. They're hooked up backwards. This one has a 4.9 volt drop, so this is probably a 5 volt Zener diode right here. Now some Zener diodes have very high forward voltage drops that would exceed the 9 volts of this battery here. So in this case, what you could do is you could just stack another battery in here. Simply just add another battery, stack it right in, plug it in, and connect this. Now we have an 18.6 volt current limited voltage source that we can test all kinds of things. You can still test LEDs and whatnot, and you could also test your microwave diodes with this as well. But you can also test Zener diodes. So there were, this is a 5.1 volt Zener diode here. Let's test another one. Try to find one that's greater than 9 volts here. Yeah, this is a 12 volt Zener diode. This is reading 11.86 volts. So this is a good way to test things that your multimeter can't. You, can, you cannot test any of these things other than even the LED. Uh, a lot of LEDs you cannot test with your multimeter. So the diode check function on these, on these multimeters, again, is very limited and it can all, is only good up to about 2.5 volts. So by doing this, you can test all kinds of things that have voltage drops of uh, 18 volts or less, or if one battery, 9 volts or less, you want to add another battery, you can go up to 27 volts. But when you do that, you just need to start being careful because the voltage is actually high enough to, um, you know, you can actually feel it. So at any rate, that's the proper way to test microwave diodes and other, other items that, that require a current limited voltage source. And by the way, this, this is an ideal meter for doing this. You can find a link to this meter in the description of my video. I do receive commissions off of these sales, and I do appreciate your support because it does take a lot of time and effort to do these videos. Hope you found this interesting and informative. If so, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel.